You've got Benita and Paolo gearing up for the wedding of the century, and then in Paolo's professional life, well, there were serious criticisms being raised. As with any pioneering technique, there were some complications, and it wasn't a clear-cut success from the beginning. Little Hannah, the subject of Benita's documentary, she sadly never made it out of the hospital after her surgery. I was devastated. Um, I had become very close to her family. It was awful. Paolo was really depressed. We had become very attached to her. We all hoped that one day we'd be going back to Korea to see her running around at home. Now she was dead, and it was awful. Paolo headed up a research lab at the Karolinska Institute, one of Europe's top-ranked medical universities, and had performed three trachea surgeries at its affiliated hospital. Several doctors who worked alongside Paolo, some tending to the patients he had implanted with those new tracheas, started voicing concerns about the new procedure. In particular, they took issue with the way he'd written them up in medical journals. We went through six of Paolo Maccarini's articles. We could show that there was lies and uh, falsifications in, in the articles he'd published. They filed an official complaint with the university, and this became worldwide news while Benita and Paolo were visiting her family. This was bad. Um, it was all over the news. He was insanely stressed. I've never seen him like that. Of course I supported him, you know, like any loving partner or spouse would do. He was adamant that this was going to go away, and there was no basis to these allegations, and it was just these jealous colleagues of his that were out to get him. And I believed he was being unfairly maligned. I'm helping him answer press requests. You know, he felt like his career was imploding. She went into full PR mode, took over my dining room table, spread all this stuff out, was on the computer. He came in crying. Um, it's very emotional. You know, we just, we felt bad. Honestly, it made me like him more. He has an intimidating presence. And so to see him vulnerable like that, it just made him more human. I was gonna do whatever I could to help him and be by his side and, and help him get through it. Soon after, Paolo and Benita headed off to Italy for a quick weekend. So we had gone to Italy, and I kept saying to Paolo, while we're here, can we please go to Castel Gandolfo? And I want to see the place where we're getting married. And he was really resistant. It was just one excuse after the other, and I couldn't understand what the resistance was. I'm like, please, I just, I want to see this place. We drive to Castel Gandolfo. He showed me where I would be walking in, and he showed me the lake where the fireworks would be, and he showed me the little city hall where he said the field paperwork was already in there with our names on it and everything was ready for the wedding. But the whole time he was in a foul mood, and I was really, like, annoyed because, you know, I'm seeing the place where we're going to get married. I wanted him to be more excited. I remember asking him, like, you know, what's your problem? <laughs> And he basically just said that he was preoccupied with all this stuff going on with the allegations. Regardless, the countdown to the wedding was on. The beautiful bride. And the wedding of a lifetime. Oh, my <laughs> Cheers. 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 The excitement for this wedding was palpable. With my friends, we started calling it the wedding of the century. It just felt like this was going to be akin to a royal wedding. It started to feel like she was Princess Diana or something. I think many of us were uh, very concerned about what we were going to wear. What do you wear to a wedding that the Pope is at and the Obamas are at? Like, I, I just don't have clothes like that. <laughs> I had not just one special outfit, but three. Yeah, it was, um, it was by far the most expensive shopping trip of my experience in my entire life. <laughs> so on top of everything else, he first said that the Pope was going to allow both of us to take communion in the church during the wedding, which also would be highly controversial because divorcees are not allowed to take communion in the Catholic Church. And then he adds to it that because we have so many lovely gay friends and because of because of Matthew designing your dress, 
He wants to open it up so that if gays want to take communion during our wedding ceremony, they can do that too. I grew up Catholic, and I was like, wow, this is um, unbelievable. This is really going to happen? This would be the time in your life that was the moment that you were accepted. And after the wedding, they decided Benita and her daughter were going to move to Barcelona with Paolo, where he had a home. Benita quit her television job and pulled her daughter out of her private school and got ready to move. This is the place where you and I will live for the rest of our life. I love you. Three or four times, we were supposed to go to Barcelona, and every time at the last minute, there was an emergency surgery, every single time. Her leaving her job and having never been there, I was kind of like, wow, that's odd. I had asked a group of girlfriends to go to the spa. I'm walking up to the reception desk to pay, and I pull out my phone. I see this email. The subject line just says the Pope. She looked stricken. It was like somebody knocked the wind out of me. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.